Here's the answers to homework number six, section five, five. Uh, a couple things I'd like you to pay attention to are the nice sentences that I wrote discussing how the slope is the rate and what the y-intercept represents in each problem. Um, and when you do your graphs on the back, I have given you a table of tons of ordered pairs. You only had to have three. I gave you like zero through eight so that you could hopefully find yours on there. All right, here we go. I put a check next to the three that I used to graph the line. All right, let's go through the problems. In this first problem, we got King Midas giving away his gold. At the right is a graph showing how many pieces he has left. What's the slope of the line? So to get the slope of the line, I would have picked two points, like say that one and that one, and I would have done the rise over the run. And to do this, you need to pay attention to the scale. It looks like on the y-axis, uh, the blocks are going by 500s and on the x-axis they are going by 5 so this is 5, 10, 15, 20 so I've got 500 over 20 for the slope negative because it's going down and that would be negative 25 for the slope so what does the slope represent? we all know the slope is the rate and it's the rate in uh, y units per x unit, so that would be gold pieces per day. So the slope represents that the king is giving away his gold at a rate, right? Because Slope is rate at a rate of 25 gold pieces per day. All right, that brings us to the y-intercept. The y-intercept is right here. That looks like it's at 4,500. And as we went over yesterday, the y-intercept represents the beginning amount, or the amount when x is zero. So the amount when the days is zero, after zero days, how many gold pieces did he have? Uh, that would be the beginning amount. So it means the king began with 4,500 gold pieces. All right, number two, we got Julio on The Biggest Loser and lost a lot of weight. And here we go, what's the slope of the line? So again, I would pick two points, maybe this one and this one, and I would do the rise over the run. The scale goes by 40s on the y-axis, so when I go down two blocks, that's down 80. And the y-axis, it's going by two and a halfs, or every two blocks, is 5. So this would be 5, 10. Down 80 over 10 is the slope. Negative 80 over 10, which is negative 8. So that is the rate, right? The slope is the rate. So what does the slope represent? Uh, it represents that Julio is losing 8 and of course it would be pounds per week, right? Eight pounds per week. What is the y-intercept? So the y-intercept is right here. That would be at 360. And as we learn, that's the beginning amount. So in this case, that would be Julio's beginning weight. 
So Julio started at 360 pounds. All right. Next up, we got Mr. Combs created a melody of the greatest Spanish hits from the 1980s called El Besto de las Ochentas. It has become so popular, people are downloading it from his website every day. The graph shows how many downloads he's getting per minute. What is the slope of the line and what does it represent? So I would pick two points, like say this one and this one. To get the slope, I'm going to do the rise over the run. The scale on the y-axis is 5,000. So this would be 5, 10, 15,000 over... 10. So the slope would be 15,000 over 10 or 1,500. The slope of the line is 1,500. And what does that represent? Well, of course, the slope is the rate. So it's 1,500, right, downloads per minute. So his, oops, I don't know what that is. His songs are being downloaded at a rate of 1,500 songs, maybe, per minute. And the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept in this case is zero, of course. After zero minutes, nobody could have downloaded his songs because he had not put them, uh, made them available to be downloaded yet. But the y-intercept, that'd be the b-value is zero. And it means, uh, I suppose it means the beginning amount of downloads was zero. Is the data in the graph proportional? Well, of course it's proportional because it goes through the origin. And because it's proportional, I can easily write an equation for it. The equation would be y equals kx, but we know k is just the slope. And in this case, the slope was 1,500. So y equals 1,500x. And last up, how many minutes will it take until 100,000 people have downloaded it? Well, in this equation, x is the number of minutes and y is the number of downloads. So if I take 100,000 and put it in for the number of downloads, I can solve for the number of minutes until that happens. So I would have 100,000 equals 1,500x. And I would solve that by dividing both sides by 1,500. And I would get x equals 66.6 .6 repeating, or 66 and two-thirds minutes until 100,000 people have downloaded it. All right, this brings us to the graphs. So to make the graphs, I need, an I need a table of solutions. I can pick any x values I want. So I'm going to go ahead and pick 0, 2, and 4. It's kind of my standard numbers to pick. And one at a time, I need to plug those in for x. So 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 12. 2 times 2 plus 3y equals 12. And 2 times 4 plus 3y equals 12. And this will allow me to solve this equation when I plug each of these numbers in for x. Here I would just get 3y equals 12 because 2 times 0 is 0. 
And if I divide by 3, I would get y equals 4. So when x is 0, y is 4. How about when x is 2? Well, now I'd have 2 times 2 would be 4, plus 3y equals 12. I would subtract 4 from both sides and get 3y equals 8. Then I would divide by 3, and I would get y equals 2.6 repeating. When x equals 2, y equals 2.6 repeating. And the last one is when I substituted the 4 in for the x. So I did 2 times 4 plus 3y equals 12. And I subtracted 8 from both sides and got 3y equals 4. And I divided both sides by 3 and got y equals 1.3 repeating. So let's graph those. The ordered pair 0, 4 would be 0 to the right and up 4. The ordered pair 2, 2.6, would be 2 to the right, and up 2 and 2 thirds of a block. Because 0.6 repeating is 2 thirds. And the ordered pair 4, 1.3 repeating would be 4 to the right, up 1 and 1 third of a block. And I can go ahead and connect those. And there's what my line would look like. So the next one, again, I need to make a table of ordered pairs, and I need to pick three x values, my choice. I generally go with 0, 2, and 4, and I need to substitute each of those into this equation. So when I put 0 in, I would have y equals 3 times 0 minus 4. When I put 2 in for x, I would have y equals 3 times 2 minus 4. And when I put 4 in for x, I would have y equals 3 times 4 minus 4. So this first one gives me 0 minus 4, or just y equals negative 4. When x equals 0, y equals negative 4. The next one gives me y equals 6 minus 4, or y equals 2. So when x equals 2, y equals 2. And the last one, when x was 4, I get y equals 12 minus 4, or y equals 8. So when x is 4, y is 8. Let's go ahead and graph those. The first ordered pair, 0, negative 4, would be 0 to the right, down 4. The next ordered pair, 2, 2, would be 2 to the right, and up 2. And the last one, 4, 8, would be 4 to the right, and up 8. And I can connect those with a line. There's my line that represents that equation. And last up, I want a line that represents this equation. So I need to make a table of ordered pairs. I need to pick three x values. I'm going to go with my standard three, which is 0, 2, and 4. Oops. I forgot to name the slope of the y-intercept for each of these. Let me go back. Let's see. In this one... Um, you know, if I was going to do this one, I would probably go ahead and use this point and this point, and I would use those two points to calculate the slope, which is down 4, right 6, so the slope is negative 4 over 6, which reduces to negative 2 thirds. And the y-intercept is right here at 4. In this problem, I'll just go ahead and use this point and this point, And I will do the rise over the run. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. The rise is six. The run is two. So the slope is six over two, which is three. And the y-intercept is right there at negative four. All right. And last up. All right, so I've picked my x values. I need to substitute those into the problem. So the first one would be 3 times 0 plus 5y equals negative 10. The second one would be 3 times 2 plus 5y equals negative 10. And the last one would be 3 times 4 plus 5y equals negative 10. And I'm ready to solve. This one would just be 5y equals negative 10, since 3 times 0 is 0. And if I divide by 5, I get that y equals negative 2. So when x equals 0, the y value is negative 2. In the second one, I get 6 plus 5y equals negative 10. I would subtract 6 from both sides and get 5y equals negative 16. And I would divide by 5 and get y equals negative 3.2. When x equals 2, y is negative 3.2. And last up, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 5y equals negative 10. I would subtract 12 from both sides, giving me 5y equals negative 22. I would divide by 5, and I would get y equals negative 4.4. So when x equals 4, y is negative 4.4. So this gives me uh, points at 0, negative 2, which is 0 to the right down 2. 2, negative 3.2. Should be, let's see, down 1, down 2, down 3.2. Would be about right there. And 4 to the right, down 4. 0.4 would be just less than four and a half. And so my line would look something like that. Now, the uh, finding the slope of this line. You know, it would be easiest to find the slope if I pick two nice points. You know, there is a nice point right there, and I notice here that there's a nice point right there. But you probably wouldn't get that yourself. So maybe we should use the slope formula, and we'll just use these two points and the slope formula and go y minus y over x minus x. That gives me negative 3.2 plus 2 would be negative 1.2 over 2. Now, I don't really want that left as the slope. That's a yucky slope. Uh, I'm not sure you know how to convert. Okay, we don't want a fraction that's got a decimal inside the fraction. So this is not a good answer. One way to change that into a fraction without decimals is to move the decimal one spot in the numerator and denominator and get negative 12 over 20. Now that can be reduced now because 4 goes into both those numbers and that would be negative 3 fifths. If you didn't follow that, you might ask me in class or uh, we're going to learn a better way anyway. The y-intercept, of course, is right here at negative 2. So there you go. Hope that helps.